The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Oh, no coffee. Let's make some new one. Uh, how does this coffee maker work? Seems like this is some sort of IoT device. I can tell there's a Raspberry Pi attached to it. Maybe I have to SSH into that thing. Nope. Okay, gurgle. Okay, gurgle. This is Matt. How can I help you? Wait, 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 wait. Are you Matt Urgle? I've asked for gurgle. Yes, this is Matt Urgle. Really? Do you have a new job? Is that necessary? Oh, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Okay, can you switch this thing on? No way. No? Don't feel like it. I need some coffee, please. Absolutely not. Why do all these Internet of Things devices always have to be some kind of crappy and voice activated? Nothing works. I got to beat the system. I am going to make the crappiest, most useless IoT device the world has ever seen. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and today we are going to reinvent the Internet of Things by building the useless test test device you could ever imagine. The most useless IoT device ever. It's really hard to come up with something that is totally useless. Here are some of my best or worst ideas. Let's grab the IoT soldering iron and start prototyping. The IoT angle grinder. Oh, I see it's paper cut. Introducing IoT TP, including a webcam. IoT bike helmet. Mm, that's a little lame. IoT Roman soldier helmet. Now we're talking. I use my IoT shuffle to put away my IoT debris. IoT ukulele. Okay, I need to download the tuning app. The IoT lunchbox dev kit. Wait, that's a real thing. You can watch that on element14.com. IoT me. Wow, that's the future. Yes, that is how product development is properly done. You take some random stuff and glue a Raspberry Pi onto it. Coming up with a useless IoT device is not easy. So what I will do is I build the core components, the main electronics of the board and enclosure, and send that off to some other creators so they can add even more useless features and make it a true, highly complex, but absolutely useless IoT device. Here are my core components. I will use the ESP8266 module called Featherboard Hussa, which is an IoT module made by Adafruit. That is pretty convenient because you can attach a LiPo battery directly to it to make your project portable. To power my project, I will use a 5 volt wall board and not a single LiPo cell because that would be convenient and convenience is something that we don't need in this project. So I will run it off this 5 volt wall board, which would also just work if I would just apply 3.3 volts, but this way I can get away with more power consumption and some excess heat. And I will use an additional 12 volt power supply just to run some LEDs and just to make it even more cumbersome because you have to plug two things into a wall. Remember that thing that you attached on top of your Sega Genesis, the 32X, and then you had the CD portion and you needed three power plugs because Sega is apparently not able to do a single one. Yes, I learned from Sega that you could get away with a ton of power plugs and people still love you, but they don't love your device. Okay, let's sort up the circuit.
Okay, the physical build is finished. The coat is left to do. But first, I need to get the outside, the design, the language this device speaks to people. Because not everybody is a born designer. So I do what all good designers do. They create a mood room, a place where I can go and look at things and get inspired. I use some plants to give me the scent of nature and some great artwork and some really good pieces of timeless design. Like for example, this rock in India or Richard Dean Anderson's mullet. And of course, the incredible Fiat Multipla. So here is my design. I've chosen the low poly design you may know from the low poly Pokemon by Flovalistic. And I added some steampunk elements because we all know steampunk is nice and dandy and it's about hot gluing random gears to objects. And I also added some rust for decorative purposes. The bottom is made with my resin printer for no apparent reason, just to make it a little bit transparent, so maybe other hosts could need that transparency for whatever they are building. But what does my useless IoT device actually do? Let's look at the code. So this code is bought together from different tutorials I found online. I'm still learning like everybody else. This is for the ESP8266 module. You just enter your credentials here, then it will Define some pins, open the server, open the serial terminal and write the pin low so it isn't uh, activated. When it's powered on, it will serial print some useful informations and log into the Wi-Fi. As long as it's not connected, it will write beep and when it's connected, it's just displaying this witty text. When it's ready, it will display some more text. Then you have to enter the IP shown in the terminal into your browser. Now it's looking for clients that want to connect to the service and some ID IoT has a request, then it will read that request and act accordingly. Uh, and the commands are enlighten and go full caveman. This portion has to be in there for some reason, a tutorial told me that. In this part we are declaring all the buttons and the writings for the HTML file that will be displayed in your browser. Upload the code, let's look at it. Okay, we are starting the device. It's connecting to my router and it's ready. So we have to enter that IP address. This is the HTML file. We have buttons for on and off and it's telling us that it's probably hogging bandwidth or it's for sure hogging bandwidth. And we can check that over the serial terminal. So what do you actually do with the ID IoT? Well, simply if some friend comes over and wants your Wi-Fi password because he has to update his gram and check his emails and all of that, you can just gladly give him the right Wi-Fi password, but he won't be able to log in because the router only supports 16 devices and curiously, <sighs> the ID IoT is the 16th device. So hmm, no more cell phones or tablets allowed. So you may have to build additional ID IoT devices, which is good for sales, to hog all your bandwidth and all your internet connections, but he won't get in there. Okay, that wasn't according to plan. I wanted to build a completely useless IoT device. This is not very economically or is stupid, but it's not completely useless. So I failed the challenge. I need help. So. Do you have any ideas for a really useless IoT device? Something that doesn't do not nothing? It does something, but it has absolutely no sense of purpose. Nothing that could be of any use. So I will send my IoT device to the next 
element 14 host and he will try to make it even more useless and then it will send it to the next and the next and the next and in the end we have the most useless IoT device ever. So that is my completely useless IoT device. I can't wait to read all the comments and your suggestions and your ideas what you would do to build the most useless IoT device ever. So I gotta go to the post office to send this thing to the next Element 14 host and then there's another project waiting for me. Okay, Gargle. Tell ho cock, hock, yeah, <laughs> baby. This thing recording? Focus. You have to focus. I used the featherboard, Hussa! Which I mentioned earlier. It is based on the. Uh, Here's something for the summer IoT popsicle stick. You have to download the popsicle. Forget Google Glass. This is IoT welding glass.